way to make that work and make it sound natural and believable. That's one of the biggest challenges of anime voice acting. People that do what's called prelay, that's so easy, you guys. For anime voice actors, prelay is like our dream. <laughs> so come, if someday we're gonna get to go in and just perform the lines the way we, we, we want to perform them, and then somebody else will animate to our performance. That's what they do with Simpsons, Family Guy, all that stuff. They all go in there and they do the line however they want to do it, and then the director pieces together the audio, and then they give it to the animators. The animators animate to the finished audio. But here's what, here's what we see. When we go into the studio, we go into, there, there's a studio that has a control room area, and then there's a recording booth area, which is basically a, a phone booth. It's a, a very small little box that's padded, all padded, so that the sound is dead and, and it's quiet in there. And you've got a mic hanging down in front of you, and there's a TV screen with the, the anime on it, the video on it, and then there's another screen with the script on it. There used to be paper scripts, and you would hold the script, or you would have a music stand, and you would you'd do this, right? You'd follow the script, the, pay, the, the, pr the printed paper scripts, and you'd watch the video. But then somebody along the way had a brilliant idea, get rid of the paper, put a second flat screen monitor in there that takes a feed from the director's computer with the script on it. So now when the line doesn't fit, and often they don't, and you have to rewrite the line, the director just writes it, you know, types it right into the script, and there it is on your screen. And there's no rustling of papers, and, and any, any noise that can come from trying to flip a page or bumping the music stand. So it's a really smart idea. So that's what we see. We're, we're, we're watching the video, and then right here we've got a, a, another monitor with the script on it and the microphone. And we've got headphones on, and in our headphones we can hear everyone else that's recorded so far, the music and the, the effects, and uh, they'll play it once for us in the Japanese, so you can kind of get a sense of like what the mood of it, of it is, and then we'll do it ourselves. Um, that's, that's it. I mean, it's... It's, uh, it's, uh, what's the word? It's, it, it's much more romanticized in people's minds, I think. When you guys imagine it, it's, it's much, much simpler and kind of bare bones. I mean, I, I know people that have studios in their homes. Literally, you can, nowadays, you can buy equipment to do this in your bedroom. And, you know, I have, I have one of my bedrooms in my home in Houston turned into a studio room where I've written and produced hundreds of songs, like start to finish. And I turned the closet, I padded the closet out, put a screen in there um, and a mic and, and that became the voice booth and you would never know it because the technology exists now and it's so reasonably priced that you can do amazing work right in your, you know, in your own home for next to nothing on your own computer. But that's, that's about it. Uh, yes, ma'am. You, cutie. Oh, oh, how did you I love your hat, by the way. It's awesome. Where's your sister? She's at home. <laughs> Don't ever give her that hat back. <laughs> Tell her that it's yours now by divine right. Okay. Um, how did you get to be a part of the Full Metal cast? How did I get to be a part of the Full Metal cast? Well, that's a great little question too. Um, I had been doing several shows for Funimation. I had done Broly and Dragon Ball Z and I, I also played Berter in the Ginyu Force in Dragon Ball Z. A lot of people don't even know that because, you know, he's this other little small character. But then I did Yu Yu Hakusho and Kitty Grade and Case Closed and Spiral and... Yeah. And, uh, and, and then Funimation got the license for Full Metal Alchemist. And uh, here's a little piece of trivia that you probably won't know. Justin Cook, who was in Yu Yu Hakusho, he was a director at the time, and he was originally going to be directing Full Metal. But then he got promoted. <laughs> and he's now head of production. So after he got promoted, they, they brought in Mike and Colleen to, to direct in his plays. But at the time of auditions, Justin Cook was still going to be directing. So Justin called me one day, Funimation's in Dallas, and uh, I lived in Houston. And Justin called me and said, hey, I want you to come up for an audition. And I'm like, okay. And uh, he said, it's this show called Full Metal Alchemist. And I'm like, Full Metal Alchemist? Okay. 
uh, I just did Full Metal Panic. <laughs> Are they related? And he's like, no. <laughs> um, so I got up to Funimation, and I'll, I'll walk you through this too. They have a little, uh, a little waiting room area with a table and vending machines and Coke machines. And, all, and that's where you go to wait while you're waiting to audition. And what they do is they have these, uh, these, these little notebooks with audition sides in them. Now, an audition side is basically one sheet of paper. It's got a picture of the character, a little description of the character, and then a handful of lines that the character would say. And they have page after page in these little books for you to look through when you're coming up to audition. So I'm sitting there in this little room looking through this book of Full Metal Alchemist characters. And I don't know anything about the show. I don't know who's a main character, who's not a main character. I was just looking through to see which ones I felt like I might be able to, you know, that I might be able to be good at. I saw Armstrong, and I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, you know, I could... Behold my beautiful autistic alchemy! I mean, I could fake that kind of thing, but there are better people for that role, right? They're just people that have a better voice for that. I'm not going to get cast for that kind of role. So I didn't even bother to read for that. And then I'm looking, okay, Colonel Mustang, okay. I'm looking at him, we're reading it up. And then, okay, Alphonse Elric, and he, he's a little boy, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay. And I come across this little kid with this red coat hey. named Edward. Well, I don't even know who he is. So I, I'm reading the little description. And, uh, and Justin came out of the studio and he said, hey, Vic, glad you came up. Uh, you ready to audition? I'm like, yeah. He said, did you get a chance to look through the sides? And I said, I did. I, I, this guy looks fun. And I pointed to Ed, and Justin got this really weird smile on his face, and he said, I'm glad, because I thought you might be good for him. I was thinking of having you read for him. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I went in, but we got into the studio, and this is where it got weird. Usually you go in, and you read the, the lines on the piece of paper, right? Mm -hmm. There would be like five lines, and you would do them, and then the director would go, okay, yeah, that was good, make him a little younger or slow it down a little bit, or make him a little more sinister, or, you know, he'll give you a little redirect, and you'll try to make adjustments and do it again. Well, we got into the studio, and um, Justin said, we need to do something a little different here, Vic. And I said, okay. He said, Otakon in Baltimore, big convention in Baltimore, uh, is in three weeks, and Larkin Seal is going to be the, the band performing at Oticon, and they want, Anaplex wants to premiere the first episode of this show at Oticon. And he said, so I'm going to have you re record the whole first episode. <laughs> That's the Cornello episode, right? In Lior, first series. Well now, he didn't cast me. I wasn't cast. It was still an audition. But he need, they needed to prepare a temp version to show it at Octagon. So, I, so as soon as we start recording this first episode, and Ed's like freaking every other line, I'm like, holy crap, this is a big character. This guy's a pretty large character. And then I realized, he's the full metal alchemist. <laughs> the full metal alchemist. And so I started getting kind of like, wow, this, wow, it's like a big role. We finished the episode, they showed it in, in Baltimore, but they were still casting. They were not prepared to confirm anyone as having a role. In fact, I'll let you know something. There were people that were on that original recording that they showed in Baltimore that did not end up getting cast. They got recast. Because, another thing you may not know, when a big show like Full Metal or Bleach or Naruto or something like that, when those shows get cast in English, the Japanese make those decisions. The company that owns the show makes that decision because they want to make sure that that show is represented in English exactly the way they want it represented. So all Funimation was doing was making, was recording the auditions and then shipping them off to Tokyo for, the, for Anaplex to listen to and go, no, 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 maybe, no. Okay, we like him for that, we like this girl for her. And that's how people were, were getting cast for Full Metal Alchemist. But months went by. 
and they want and they want